Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magazine Centre. Today I'm doing the Charles Report for the week commencing the 29th of May and about only some key aspects and trends that's taking place and giving an overview of what it all means. Before I do that, I just want to clarify as I always do that this story doesn't control our lives and gives us a framework to help us understand what's unfolding around us and helps to recognise where the opportunities for growth are and what kind of lessons we need to be learning at this time in order to maximise our growth. But for anything to actually change, it requires that we take action, that we participate in the process and we use wisdom to guide our actions rather than egoic desires because that way we maximise our growth without creating calm for ourselves through choosing course of action which are not in our best interest as it were. Now in terms of the aspects this week, I'll begin with the moon's transit as usual. She starts off in Aries, so this is the time where you may feel that emotional drive to make things happen, to take action, or just have that deep sense of motivation to get something done and to assert ourselves. On Friday, she'll enter Taurus, so we may, this is a time where we may feel that need to kind of slow down to connect with the body, get more grounded. I may even just, um, feel the need to be in a more natural environment to help with that kind of grounding process and just focus on doing things on a step-by-step -step basis rather than rushing ahead with things. On Sunday, she'll enter Gemini, so this is a time where we feel that desire to kind of work on communication or to gather information related to the projects we're working on and just focus on networking and connecting with other people who um, may have important information that we need for whatever we're working on and on Monday itself we'll have the new moon in Gemini so this is an opportunity for us to kind of reflect on how we want to improve the way we operate within the sign of Gemini so Gemini deals with perception, communication, our immediate environment and our ability and in terms of communication it's both the speaking and listening side of things so ideally at the highest level of Gemini it's learning to be present in our lives, it's moving beyond mental models, it's detaching from po different points of view if you like and instead seeking to see all the different facts together and in order to see reality as it is. So the you know, challenge is to move beyond thinking, so go beyond being human thinking and move into the present moment where we're human beings, i.e. we just learn to be who we are, to be in the moment without worrying about past or future, because only in the present moment the reality tr truly exists. So why do we go through all kinds of mental gymnastics why do we stress ourselves out through excessive mental activity when the only thing that really matters is the present moment and on tuesday the moon will enter her home sign of cancer so this would be a time where we may feel the emotions particularly strongly so it's also important that we create space for ourselves for the emotions to flow freely so we don't pen get them all pent up and it's about nurturing ourselves in the way that enables us to better nurture the people. So we may feel um, more of a desire to be to withdraw and spend more time on the home front, if you like. Now, in terms of the other aspects taking place this week, and um, the first aspects begin on Thursday. So we'll have Pallas Athena turning direct. She's been retrograde in Libra since about the 17th of February. Now that she's turning direct again it's important that whatever wisdom we've gained from her retrograde that we apply it in our lives so that we don't waste the opportunity to maximize our growth from it. With Palestina retrograde and Libra it's been all about balance and reconciliation it's the understanding that in order for true balance and harmony to exist we have to bring the yin and yang um, together so rather than seeing them as antagonistic it's seen as them complementary the two sides of the same um, the same phenomenon if you like so if we don't if we don't bring the yin and yang to get an equal balance then it brings chaos um, about and we won't really feel much peace and harmony if everything is chaotic so it's about seeking that internal balance of the yin and yang so that when we're balanced internally and have that internal harmony and peace we can then radiate that outwardly to other people and it's about understanding the importance of tact and diplomacy as part of seeking healthy compromise or healthy solutions that honour both parties in any given dynamics. So it's all about that balance and reconciliation. On the same day we'll have 
Merc will be both square to um, Neptune and in conjunct Saturn. So the square to Neptune is all about the challenge of being mindful. It's about recognizing where our thoughts are being driven by the ego's need to be right or to be superior to other people. And it's understanding where our thought processes or our obsessive thinking can undermine our um, ability to experience true peace and presence. So it's about remembering to be mindful. And when we do find ourselves stuck in a mental rut or stuck in an obsessive thinking pattern, it's about recognizing it and moving beyond it. So it's not judging ourselves, it's important we don't judge because that's the ego again coming into the back door. It's about being, learn to be present, to recognize our own thoughts and recognize when we've allowed our thinking to get out of hand and affect our mood as a result. And we also have the inconjunct of Saturn on the same day. So Saturn is all about that patience, discipline and self-control. With it being inconjunct though, it can be for like trying to mix oil and water. But the thing is, for the rational mind to work at its best, it has to be disciplined. It has to have the superficial thinking or the unnecessary thoughts that don't have any real function other than to create anxiety within ourselves because we're thinking about something that's not even happened. It's about having that discipline to um, control the thoughts, to rec when we do have the when the thoughts do come up it's about having that discipline to recognize it rather than allow them to keep um, perpetuating and through that we can learn to control our thoughts better and on that on the thursday itself again we have venus will be sextile to neptune so both planets deal with love at one at, but at different levels venus is more the interpersonal dynamics is about the personal love if you like or the kind of love um, on one-to-one -one basis neptune's love is more the unconditional of the spiritual love it's about um, having that capacity to love without attachment love without condition so it's a very spiritual kind of love and it's a very compassionate kind of love so it brings us an opportunity to incorporate more compassion in terms of how we deal with other people and how we interact with our one-on-one -on -one relationships and it's about having more or seeking to have more unconditional love in our interpersonal relationships but at the same time venus is also the part of us that is about values and it's about discernment so it's about that side of it is recognizing whether or not the people that um, we expressing love to are actually right for who we are or allow us to forge a soul kind of connection because Neptune is more like the soulful kind of uh, love but that requires that both parties be aware if you like or be both of them awake and seeking that kind of level of connection now it doesn't necessarily mean romantic relationships here it could also be close friendships it could be student disciple in some cases but anything where it's about the interpersonal connection with another person and it's using Venus's um, value side of things to discern whether or not it's a relationship that will allow us to f is possible for soulful connection or if it's just not the kind that we would be able to achieve that kind of level of connection with one another because Venus drives um, love and connection if you like it's the part of us that seeks it out but at the same time with it being connected to Neptune it's about recognizing where we may be able to feel love for someone but recognize that that person isn't necessarily a good fit for who we are and being spending time with this person it may be nice but it's not the kind of connection that we want at the soul level if you like the following day um so friday here we have um Mercury will be exactly opposite Jupiter. Now they're both in the home signs. Jupiter is retrograde though, so this is a time where we may feel well, this is a time of going inwards rather than ex trying to seek external expansion. And it's about connecting with our own um, links of wisdom, if you like. It's about receiving wisdom, of moving beyond the need to hold on to beliefs and instead let go of the beliefs that limit us and always seek the truth in any given dynamic or any given situation. Just be open to new experiences which challenge our fundamental assumptions and push us to 
expand our level of awareness to a higher level so because the more we expand our awareness the more broad-minded our thinking can become and the more we can see the big picture at the same time we need mercury in order to see how the, to deal with the microcosm so the specifics the individual facts so these two together it's about learning to bring them together so we can see the microcosm and the macrocosm. Mercury allows us to see or appreciate the individual features of a tree, but Jupiter allows us to um, recognise that that tree is part of a forest, if you like. So it's about bringing the microcosm and macrocosm together, the understanding that we need to have a broad framework um, or worldview that allows us to put everything into its right perspective. We also need to have that open-minded curiosity to gather new information and keep our perspective open to new insights so rather than seeking to make information fit our assumptions is instead allowing new information to challenge our level of current understanding and to show us where our understanding is incomplete so the information guides our understanding rather than our belief or our worldview dictating what we'll accept and what information we reject as it were so it's being able to be present with information and to be open-minded enough to allow new insights to challenge our current understanding so on the same day we'll have a trine between the sun and powers athena so this aspect kind of gives us an opportunity to because with powers athena turning um, direct um, two days earlier this gives us an opportunity to kind of bring the information into ourselves or is it allows whatever kind of wisdom the, the retrograde was all about this exact trying to the sun gives us an opportunity to try and embody it if you like so I take it on board and apply it we also have a trine between Venus and Saturn on Friday so this aspect this gives us an opportunity to work on understanding the necessity of having discipline and commitment in relationships in order for long-term stability and harmony to be achieved so if we want relationships based on equality and equal treatment of one another and making sure that in the relationships um, who we are is honoured and we honour the other person equally so it's back to the whole um, to thine own self be true and to love oneself and love one another it takes discipline in order to stay focused or c committed to um, long-term relationships whether they be relationships with a significant other whether it be with important friendships in life anything that is worthwhile takes commitment and discipline to um, maintain it and when we have that discipline and that focus on equality and harmony then a true peace and harmony and equality of commitment can be achieved in our um, interpersonal relationships and it's also about using the discipline of Saturn on the values function so it's about stripping away the superficial values the ones that we may have been conditioned with but actually don't resonate with our own soul since having that discipline to strip away the superficial values the ones that keep us playing small or keep us pursuing or seeking to acquire more and more material stuff in order to feel secure and it's instead stripping away the values that drive that behavior and instead recognize that we don't actually own anything and um, we don't so when any object in our possession if you like it comes into our life you know for a time if we don't ask if it doesn't have any purpose in our lives though then we have to be willing to let go of it in order to allow um, in order to make space for something new so this kind of feeds into the trine between venus and um, pluto on monday when because this aspect gives an opportunity to strip away the old values and to recognize the importance of integrity and authenticity um, required to achieve truly deep and committed relationships with another person whether it be again a romantic partner whether it be important friends who the kind of connection with one another is way more than just a casual acquaintance it's much deeper than that it's about a commitment to personal integrity within relationships and stripping away the kind of values that would keep us operating in a kind of controlled dynamic in relationships and 
using material possessions as a means of trying to control relationships, if you like. And on another aspect that will um, be taking place is Merck will be in conjunct to um, Pluto and um, Venus will be in conjunct to Jupiter. These are both on Saturday, so Mercury in conjunct to Pluto is all about the challenge of transforming our men the mental mind or the left brain if you like, the rational intellect. It's about moving beyond old outworn thinking patterns, um, old ways of perceiving things and old mental attachments. Pluto is all about stripping away attachments, it's about stripping away all the props that we use in order to um, try and make ourselves feel empowered and instead recognise that true power lies within and can be only connected to if we have a um, strong commitment to truth. So this dynamics is all about challenging those um, mental assumptions or those mental patterns that keep us playing the same old obsessive thought patterns that don't serve us. What's Venus trying to Jupiter is about seeking a greater degree of understanding in relationships and understanding the necessity of having core values in order to establish a broader framework of understanding. So, I mean, if you if you imagine um, a business, for example, if it doesn't have a clear-cut set of values guiding it, what's to stop it from dissolving into chaos? So, you need those solid values in order for a high level of understanding or high level of organisation to be possible in life. So it's about understanding our um, values. It's also about Venus deals with our capacity for connection and love with other people. And to Jupiter, it's about expanding that capacity because Jupiter is all about expansiveness. It's about understanding that love needs to be the driving force in all our key relationships in order for them to be healthy. And we also need to seek a kind of broad-minded approach and and understanding that different people have a different philosophy depending on how they were raised, the kind of environment they grew up in and no one philosophy um, covers, no one person has a monopoly on truth if you like so it's about seeking, ex expanding our capacity to love, it's about having clear you know, values that allow us to stick to, or stay in alignment with natural laws if you like, so it's bringing our values into alignment with understanding the higher um, laws of nature because if our values are in alignment we don't then pursue base or more base desires or more base values which create calm for ourselves through um, a, like a misunderstanding of how things actually work. The final thing taking place this week is after all the uh, mental energy of Mercury in Gemini, Mercury is going to be moving into Cancer on Tuesday so this, with Mercury moving to Cancer, the number of planets in the home signs goes down from five to four, because um, Venus will still be in Taurus. But Mercury in Cancer is all about seeking an understanding of the emotional side of our nature. It's about the seeking to develop a mental understanding of our subconscious nature, of our emotions, our feelings. And in terms of how we communicate one, with one another, it's about learning how to be have compassionate speech, of understanding human frailty and that in order to convey truth to another person in a way that they will be able to take it on board, sometimes you have to make sure that the choice of words conveys it in a loving way so that it doesn't come across as jarring, doesn't come across as a personal attack. It's about that compassion, compassionate speech and right speech that allows us to convey the truth in a way that acknowledges um, kind of the feeling nature of the human frailties if you like of human vulnerabilities it's about seeking to present the truth as best we know it in as loving and compassionate way as possible so there's quite a lot going on this week but overall the main two players will be Mercury and Venus so this week is a lot of opportunities to transform both the mental and or well, the intellectual functions of the mental mind, our perception, um, the way we communicate with other people, and with our values, it's about stripping away the values that we may have been conditioned with, but don't actually reflect who we are. And it's about 
seeking to achieve more, I guess, integrity or authenticity in relationships. So it's about appreciating the need for discipline in order to achieve truly balanced and long-term relationships and about staying true to, um, or being as true to who we are as possible and uh, make, encouraging the other person to do the same. So this week is all about learning to transform the rational mind and our values. But if nothing else, the most powerful thing we can do for ourselves is to learn to be present. With Mercury and Gemini for most of the week up until Tuesday, there's a lot of mental energy around and the sun is obviously in Gemini as well. And we have a new moon in Gemini this week. So Gemini energy is very strong at this point. And the thing we need to remember is that our thinking is not necessarily a reflection of reality. It's a reflection of how or what we how we see it. But what we're seeing or what we think we're seeing are sometimes different. So it's about moving beyond thinking, of moving into the present moment, bringing the mental mind to, or the mental side of the mind to stillness, and being able to be in the present moment to accept things or accept reality exactly as it is. Because only through accepting reality as it is that we can then initiate changes in our lives. Because it's like the old adage: what we resist persists. If we keep resisting new insights, we'll just keep fire or power in this internal conflict within ourselves the only place where we can really overcome this conflict or this internal um these dichotomies and challenges is to learn to be present to still the mind to let go of the need to know everything so we're no longer creating stress for ourselves or anxiety through pressurizing ourselves to know everything it's being humble enough to recognize that we don't know everything and no one does so why stress ourselves out trying to prove that we're right and everyone else is wrong why not accept the fact that we don't know everything we may have we may have a good grasp of certain elements of um, universal truths but it's not as a well and good knowing something but if we're not applying it do we really have a right to be trying to preaching it to other people so this is a week to really, where possible, slow down, to become present in our lives so we're not bound up by our thoughts, we're not tormenting ourselves through obsessive thinking, and it's about stripping away val any values or um, relationship patterns which are dysfunctional and prevent us from achieving a higher, more empowered dynamic within relationships and a more clear-cut idea of what our own personal values are rather than the ones we've been hand conditioned with by society is stripping away the values that are superficial and seeking to value what is real and authentic and based in love, not fear and then the need to acquire or control. So may this week bring you many new insights, may it bring you many opportunities for growth and may it allow you to move beyond old patterns of thinking and learn to be more present with our own lives because when we're present we're no longer stressing ourselves out because in the present moment there's no worry about past or future we're where everything truly is because the present is the only thing that truly exists so may this week bring you many blessings and new key insights to empower your journey take care and be blessed